Hey guys, this is Jason, and in this episode of First Things First, we're going to take a look at sending a custom PWM range to your servo or linear servo. So why would you even want to send a custom PWM range to your servo? Well, not all servos are created equal, and they don't all run on the exact same range. And so any servo you buy from Servo City, such as this HS488 uh, from Hitech, is going to have a specified PWM range on the specs table on the product page of the website. So you can go ahead and refer to that to see what the exact range should be. And we've gone through and tested every servo to see exactly what the minimum and maximum signal is that it'll respond to. And that way, once you map your code to that PWM range, you'll get a very proportional response out of your servo. Um, it also means you're getting the full rotation that the servo is capable of. So just as a quick example, let's take a look at what it looks like to this HS48HB. I've got a clamping servo to shaft coupler on there to make it easier to see uh, where it's at within its rotation. And I also have a PWM meter that I'm using in line here between the expansion hub and the servo. Now, this is not something that's FTC legal on your robot during the competition, but they make for a really great troubleshooting uh, and learning tool as you're programming and building and testing your robot. All right, first I'm gonna send a 1000 to 2000 microsecond signal. So we're starting right about here and then ending right about there. That's certainly less than its full capability. So next I'm going to be sending its maximum PWM range as specified on the servo page, which happens to be 553 to 2425 microseconds. And there you can see that we're getting almost exactly 90 degrees because that's the maximum rotation, 90.5 degrees. So how is this accomplished with the Rev Expansion Hub? Let's take a quick look at the code. There's only a few quick changes you need to make. So you can see here that I've started off with the concept scan servo uh, program that was included with the FTC SDK as an example. And I've made a few modifications to it. Most notably, instead of using the servo class, I'm using the servo IMPL EX class, which I presume means servo implementation extended. And when you use this class instead of the servo class, you get a few additional methods that you don't normally have. So the next line of code is we're just creating a range in the format that it's going to want when we go to assign a PWM range. So we're using the PWM control class to create a PWM range. We're giving it the name range. And then we're passing in the minimum and maximum PWM signal. So we're going from 553 to 2425 for this particular servo. Next, where we're using the hardware map.get to assign the name of the servo for this particular case, we're going to use the servo IMPL EXC class instead of servo. Because we updated it up above, we have to update it down here as well. So the two line up with each other. And then finally, where the rubber hits the road, we can call the set PWM range, which is only a method that we can use because we changed the class from the servo class. And now we have this set PWM range class that we can use, and we're passing in that range variable that we created up above. Once you've made those minimal amount of changes in your code, it's gonna be very easy to adjust the range for whatever servo you happen to plug into that situation. Uh, and that's going to give you more proportional control and get the maximum uh, rotation out of the servos that you're using. As always, if you have any questions, be sure to send us an email to tech at servocity.com.